Hey guys, so I'm back in the shed today working on the BX. Um, last winter, I had my block heater go out. Uh, it was during the polar vortex. If you guys look on my channel, you'll see the, uh, the cold start video. Well, anyway, um, I think like the day after that video is when my block heater quit. I think it was working for that video because I believe I checked the block and it was warm. Um, even though it was like negative 40 wind chill that day. So what I believe happened is I think it just shorted out. I think it was just so cold out that, I don't know, something happened in there. I think that something happened inside with the uh, the coil that heats up, because um, pretty much that's all it is. It's just a lot of resistance happening and it creates a lot of heat. And that heat is what warms up your coolant, which in turn warms your motor and helps it to start easier. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bonnet off I gotta take these two knobs off here and we're gonna dive into this and see what's going on with it. I got these big washers on here because uh, I don't know if anybody else had this problem. These little tabs here, if you could see my finger, there's these little tabs that this holds on. And this is what happens. I saved a piece of plastic. It breaks. So the plastic gets brittle after time and it ends up just getting real brittle and it just snaps off. Um, the front of this here has little clips that push in to the side. I always call it like the firewall. So it's got little clips that push in and those never break, but it's always these clips up front here. Um, so like I said, they're just like little ears that you throw the bolt through and that's what holds it down. Um, if it breaks, just get a big washer, like a big fender washer, stick it through the bolt, thread it back down, and just make sure you push that bonnet each side in nice and tight when you thread this in and it'll hold it in place. So the next thing you wanna do is there's a little, there's a little tab here that you pull out, and what that does is it allows the hood to be held at a certain angle in which the bonnet will come forward. So then after you got them screws out and the bolts out, and you got the hood um, on this angle, and you pull forward on the bonnet. And for me, I got these LED lights down here, so what I gotta do is I gotta stretch this bonnet outward to get them around the LED lights. It's usually not too bad. Usually. There we go. Okay, and the bonnet comes off. Set it to the side. And then you can release your hood all the way up. Okay, now that we got the hood up and the bonnet off, we can see the block heater. Okay, here's your block heater. Okay, it's on the left side of the engine block. This piece right here, this metal piece, is actually pressed in. So the first thing you gotta do if you're installing one of these is you gotta knock out the freeze plug. You do that with just a screwdriver and a hammer or a chisel and you gently tap it and you get that to turn and rotate. And once that freeze plug rotates, you grab a pair of pliers and you pull it out. Once you pull it out, there's this metal piece here, which is like the adapter. You tap that in to the block and make sure it's all the way seated. And once you got that seated, then there'll be this plug here that comes out of it, this orange plug. You push that plug in and it's got this little green collar that snaps over it that holds that plug in tight. Okay, so that's how you install the block heater. And now I'm gonna show you how to test for a bad block heater because I believe that's what I have here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is remove this plug. So there's this collar right here. It's got these little tabs. You get a screwdriver, a little flathead. Okay, you see these tabs? You pull on them tabs, you pull out. You do the other side. You just gotta keep working it back and forth.
Okay, there you go. Okay, so now that that's up, you see how this tab works? This little collar. Just got these two little clips, and what they do is they slide over these threads here. So what you want to do is get a screwdriver, flathead, and you want to separate these little tabs, and that'll allow, the, allow this collar to come forward, or you could just pull the whole plug off with the collar. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna look inside here and inspect it, make sure that it's not green or corroded. As you can see, it's pretty clean in there. You can still see copper, so I don't think it's gonna be a connection issue. The plug looks like brand new still. Now this block heater, I got it installed when I installed my loader, when I had the dealer install my brand new loader. Um, I bought the block heater and they said as a courtesy, they'll install it for me, so that was nice. So it's really, it's not even a year old, so, or maybe it's a year old. So I'm pretty disappointed that it burned out this quick. I called the dealer and they said I must have just got a bad one because they said that's pretty uh, uncommon for a block heater to burn out that quickly. So I don't know, I really think it was probably the polar vortex that killed it. If, of course, it is killed, I'm assuming it is, because um, it doesn't work. Okay, now look in here, let me get a flashlight. Okay, look inside it. And a couple things you want to look for. You want to make sure that there's not coolant in here, because if there's coolant inside of this plug, that means that the internal seal is leaking, so coolant is, would be allowed to come through to these contacts. And what that would do is, for one, it would burn out that coil inside that heats, that heating element. It would burn that out because it would short it. And for two, you would see wetness coming in around these two pins. Um, I'm looking right now and it doesn't look bad at all. I don't see any corrosion in there. And the pins look clean and shiny. So that all looks good to me. So now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a voltmeter and we're gonna test for the resistance. So let me do that now. Okay, I got my voltmeter, or DVOM. I'll turn it on. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna go to resistance, okay, ohms and you wanna to go to this little beeper here. And what that's gonna do, try to show you this on camera. Okay, can you see the screen? It's, it's got one, it shows a number one on there. Okay, when I touch these together, it beeps, and it'll give me zero, zero, zero. So that's telling me that that's a good connection and that I got continuity, okay? So if I don't hear a beep, or it shows infinite resistance here, that means I got a break. And as I explained earlier in this video, all the all, all a block heater is, is basically just a big coil that creates a lot of resistance, and that in turn creates a lot of heat. Okay, so now we're gonna test it. I'm gonna put the negative, doesn't matter which one you're on, just put your negative lead on one pin, your positive lead on another pin, okay? Let me get this so you guys can see it, okay? So again, test it, make sure your voltmeter's working. Okay, I got a beep, I got zero, zero, zero. Means I got good continuity. Okay, I'm gonna touch each pin here. And as you can see, I got nothing. Which tells me that there's a break in the coil. Which tells me that this block heater is no good. Okay, I could reverse them, it doesn't matter. I'll go the other way with it. Nothing. Okay, so that tells me that my block heater is bad. It's shorted out internally. Uh, there is no fixing it. You just pull it out, you replace it with a new one. Um, so that's how you check it. Now we can go one step farther, just to be sure, we can go one step farther and I can test the wiring coming out of it, just to make sure we didn't have a bad plug. Okay, say you did this test, okay, and you tested both these pins and you had continuity. That would mean it's a good it's a good block here, right? So then the next thing, say you're still having a problem, the next thing to do would be to check the harness. So to test the harness, you use the same test, a resistance continuity test. And what you would do, and I can do this just to double check and make sure, is you can check your harness to make sure it's not, it doesn't have a short in it. So I'm gonna check continuity. Now this is just a ground, okay? You got your hot and your neutral. So let me check, I'll put it in one prong. Here, let me get the voltmeter where you can see it again. Okay, 
So you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm putting the, the positive in one in one of the pins. And as you can see, I got continuity there, okay? So now let me check the other pin. And now that's gonna be this one here. And as you can see, I got continuity there. Now I can check the ground. The ground is this little tab right here coming off the side. And that, it grounds off of the side. When this plug goes into the block heater, that ground makes contact with the side of that, um, that plug basically, or that block heater. Um, and that's what grounds this out. So if anything ever shorted out and you touched it, you wouldn't get shocked. So if I touch this to the ground here, and I put my other lead on the ground on the end of the plug, I got continuity. So now I just determined that this is 100% good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this harness for the future, and if I ever get a bad plug or I get a corroded end or something shorts inside, now I know I got a good extra, an extra plug that's good. That's how you check a block heater and do a continuity test and a resistance check to see if your block heater is good or bad. Okay guys, so now that I've determined that I got a bad block heater, I'm gonna go and order a new one. Um, I'll explain to you real quick how I would get this out. Um, but when I get the new one, I will be making another video. Um, and I'll make that video showing you how I would install this. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, check it out. Um, this, these threads right here on this block heater, they're nothing more than, they're the exact same threads as like your garden hose. Okay, so what I've seen people do is they go to the hardware store and they get a couple like brass fittings for a water garden hose and you thread them on there and you get some length on it to where you can get like a pipe on it or just get some length in general so you could tap on it. And what you wanna do is just either with your hand or tapping it lightly with a hammer either direction, you wanna loosen that plug up and you wanna pop it back out just like you would have the freeze plug when you installed it. Okay, and once you pop that out, you're gonna have some coolant come out you're gonna tap the new one in like I explained before, and then you're gonna to top it off with coolant. Then you're gonna let the engine run, and you're gonna make sure the system is bled and yet you have no air in the system. Once you do that, make sure there's no leak, you know, nothing's leaking on your new one. Install your plug, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna order a new block heater, and when I get it in the mail, I will do a follow-up video on the install. Okay guys, so let me show you what I'm talking about with these hood bonnets and how they break. How the plastic gets brittle and they break. Over here with my bonnet, okay, there's supposed to be a little ear here, and there's supposed to be an ear here, and that's where that threaded knob threads into to hold the bonnet tight. As you can see, this plastic here broke. I think it's supposed to be an entire circle. <laughs> I never, I, I wouldn't know because I never actually had a bonnet that wasn't broken. You know, ever since I bought this tractor, it was broken. But I believe it's supposed to make an entire, you know, a full circle here like that. As it looks like it's broken on the end here and it's broken here. This one here is completely missing. Um, you know, I always watch some Kubota versus John Deere videos. And uh, Kubota always says, oh, John Deere, is, it's all made out of plastic and blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe there's a reason Kubota makes theirs all metal. Because maybe Kubota can't build something made of plastic that's actually halfway decent that won't crack. Because I'll tell you what, I know John Deere hoods. I've seen rocks and shit get bounced off and people hitting them with hammers. And I don't think a John Deere bonnet would crack and break this easy. I love my Kubota, but I mean, come on, figure that out. Okay, so now I'm going to reinstall the bonnet. And as I explained before, first thing you want to do, you want to pull your hood down. hook it on the strap. Make sure the strap is all the way out. Do yourself a favor. Because you might think you pulled the strap all the way out. You didn't. And what that does, it doesn't allow the hood to be at the right angle. And you'll you'll struggle to get that bonnet back on. So I'm going to grab the bonnet. And as I said, for me, it's kind of tough with these LED lights, but it's not too bad. I just got to kind of stretch it apart. Got to kind of pull the bonnet apart a little bit. Once I get it past the hood, it's really not too bad. But it is a little bit harder than it was before to get on. Okay. So now, 
there's these little tabs on the side of the bonnet that slide in. I don't know if you could see this, but on the side of this radiator, the radiator support, I always call it the firewall because that's where all the wires go through. You can see these slots. There's a little notch on each side. There's a notch here and a notch here on the bonnet, on the back side of the bonnet. And then plastic slots need to slide into those, those grooves. And if you don't get them slid in, your bonnet's going to rattle or it won't, uh, it won't fit right. And you're going to wonder what the heck's going on with it. This takes a little bit of a mess to get both sides lined up just right. Okay, I usually try to do one side at a time. Can definitely be pretty frustrating. I'm kind of jealous. There we go. You can feel it kind of slide into place. And then to check it, what you can do is pull out on your bonnet. And if you don't have one of them slots or one of them grooves in, you'll be able to pull out on the bonnet. So I always test it and pull out on either side of the bonnet to make sure that those those slots are in their grooves. I'm kind of jealous for the guys that got a 2380 because they don't have to deal with that bonnet. They just pop their hood open and almost everything's accessible. That's kind of nice. But if I had to tell the truth, I kind of like the way the 2370 looks better for the 70 series. I kind of like the way the hood looks. 2380 looks good too, but I just feel like the, round, the, the hood, I might be the only one that thinks this, but I just think the hood kind of looks like a like bubbly. So I don't know, I'm a fan of the older style as far as looks go. As far as workability, I'm not a fan at all. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these threaded bolts back in, these knobs. And what you wanna do when you put these in, like I was explaining before, you wanna push in on a bonnet so that when you tighten these, the bonnet is all the way sucked in. Because if you don't do that, at least for me, the bonnet kinda sticks out and doesn't sit right with the hood. So I push it in when I close, or when I tighten it down. Let me get another washer, seeing that this side just broke. Let me get another washer for this bolt. Um, see if I can find a big fender washer somewhere. Okay, here's what I come up with. I didn't have anything real big, so it's gonna have to work for now. Thread it in, make sure my washer's catching. Push in on the bonnet. Tighten the knob. Okay, nice and tight. Make sure my strap is put away, my hood strap. And that's it. So, I'm gonna save this harness. I'm gonna order myself a new block heater. And when I get it in the mail, I'll be sure to make another video of the removal of my current block heater and the install of the new block heater. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.